How's it going, everyone? My name is Rashad Wright. I've never been wrong. I'm a poet, writer, activist here in the Jersey City area. When I was 18, 19, my first few stages were street corners, speaking during protests about all the violence that was going on in my city. And since then, I've adopted the idea that protest is more about, for my, my form of protest, is about the empowerment of a disenfranchised community. And underlying that is the idea that we need to overcome an established institution. But first is the most important thing for me is that empowerment. And that's something I try to address in my poetry and my creation. Um, I'm going to read a poem for you all from my recent collection of poetry. It's called Romeo's Whiskey. It's called um, List of Things to Do When Your Song Comes On in the Club. One, your breath is on repeat. It's about like a chorus the size of a shot glass. Your breath is short, but got a story to tell. It's half exhale, half X spell, but you know it's still witchcraft can turn a shallow breath into a deep end and we all know the deep ends in the two steps some have drowned in. The second thing you do, you put the drink down, you pick your body up, you shake off the lightning, you put on the rain dance, you stop calling it a storm, you start calling it good whether or not someone has a sky to look up to. The third thing, you feel like a sky worth looking up to. The fourth thing, you hit it to the beat. And yes, the beat hit hard. But you've been hitting harder. You just a hit that ain't go gold yet. The fifth thing that happens is you drop the beat. You lean with it. You rock with it. You drop the mic. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like the court drop charges on cops. Drop it like the whole jury's jaws ain't drop. Drop like a call from your uncle in jail. Drop like a gun's shell. Drop like a head in a noose drop, like a boy on the news drop, like the girl that ain't make the news drop, like he trans, you better drop so damn low you can call it a dance. The sixth thing that happens is you raise your hands and they stay there, right where they are seen. The seventh thing that happens is you are seen. The eighth thing that happens is you are finally seen. Nine, it ain't a dream, it just feels like one. Ten, your boy, he's still dead. It just doesn't feel like it. He's still dancing with you. And the only reason your hands is in the air is so you can pluck the halo from his hair. The 11th thing that happens is no one is in their chair. There isn't a smile that can still fit on a face. There isn't a foot told to stay in its place. And here I am doing my 12th thing. I'm just a shot lost in his own darkness borrowing a pile of flesh and the last thing that happens when your favorite song comes on in the club all of your angels will be right there with you on some dance floor when your favorite song comes on yeah uh thanks for listening to that um sorry if i get a little emotional pandemic uh recent protests of all a few people and um i have been on a lot of protests have been keeping it together and trying to be as active and supportive for my city as possible and um in doing that i'm remember i'm reminded of where i came from um when i went to new jersey city university i ran cross country meaning i started the team all by myself and this poem is about that lon loneliness I experienced starting a team and being the only runner on that team for two years. And then later, um, I ended up performing this poem on stages across the country with SLAM. But first, I performed them at street corners during protests with a megaphone in hand. It's called Black Runner Boy. You can find it on YouTube. Black Runner Boy, he used to do the high jump. But they kept raising that boy's bar a little higher than everyone else. He did the javelin throw, but had trouble seeing that far ahead. Did the pole vault, but got scared of the heights he could reach. Did the long jump, but you know he couldn't stick to the landing. Couldn't find his foot and had trouble standing tall. Black runner boy, he doesn't even run relay. 
No one's going to pass him the baton. No one's going to start his race. He's not going to get no run to start Black Runner Boy. He can't even afford running spikes. He can barely afford his sneakers. And his sneakers look like they got barbed wire for shoelaces. Look like they got bullet holes for ventilation. Look like he tried to duct tape it and hog spit the soil together. It looks raggedy. Looks worn out. Look like Black Runner Boy's dreams. All his hopes and aspirations noose tied together into a miserable excuse for footwear. I swear them shorts, they so dang high, look like they're trying to run away from them tarred, charred, scarred, and feathered legs, them ashy, busted concrete crack ankles, them crusty cut looking calves, boy legs, look like cigarette buds still trying to hold on to a flame. Boy kid, poor kid looks like he been through war out there. Wobbling on that starting line like it's the last leg of his race. I tell you all what the problem is. The problem is he's scared. He thinks there's a lynch mob out in the crowd. He thinks he's Emmett Till. He think he got that Eric Gardner, Michael Brown asthma. But I'm going to tell you all what he knows. That boy knows his race. And I don't know about you, but I know that kid look like he ready to run. And you could tell too. He got that. Police siren sculpted muscle tone. And out of breath, it's starting to look natural on him. He's proud too, wearing that jersey like it's the only reason he ain't shot yet. Like it's the only reason he alive, like his blood could just run without him, like a bullet can't cover 200 meters in 23.8 seconds. You know what, Black Runner Boy? I'm not trying to gun you or nothing like that. I'm just trying to say I used to be just like you. My fingers sharp like knives cutting through the air. Feet like wings flying down that track. You better pick that head up when you're running, boy. You better breathe, boy. Breathe because you earned every breath. And that's a privilege for us black runner boys. So you better get out there. You better run until the track get tired. Run until those sneakers are blood soaked. Run until those footsteps are bulletproof. You better run until you have a baton to pass black runner boy. You better get out there and run. Thank you for uh, listening. Um, hopefully, you all enjoy your day. Um, stay safe and um, stay in contact with loved ones. Be safe. Hi, my name is Vincent Toro. I would like to dedicate this reading to all of the protesters all over the world that are right now doing the good work. With that, I'd like to open up with the first poem in my book. It's called On Battling Baltimore Strut. Gray cased in gray, shaken and truncated like timber, the bleat rouses all provinces, calling each seed to surface and insist on a redress. This trumpet of grief and homespun placards is met with gunmetal treads bruising the fruit stands, mustard gas suffocating the night's coruscation. As elbows lock before storefronts to shelter shop windows from the wallop of pitiless Kevlar, as flares browbeat boulevards and arsenals are dispatched across the wet gravel, a single, shirtless seraph unfurls himself upon the tarmac. Flexing faux leather, he gyrates, feather glides, thunderclaps, then jukes toward the 16,000-pound armored personnel carrier. The bullying smog flinches at his voltaic gait as he peacocks into the boomerang hour, cranes his neck, and shrieks to remind the intruder, your tanks are no match for my top rock. This second poem needs no explanation or introduction. It's titled, To the White Supremacist. Hush, settle, it will be okay. I promise you, it really will. Trust me when I say that I understand how it feels to peek out from underneath your linens to find that someone else has removed all the furniture from your place. A deceased uncle once told you that your name was stitched into every garment in the closet and all the other closets too, and you believed him. But now you are learning it is impossible to possess what you did not create, impossible to possess at all. 
It's like you spent a thousand childhoods being bathed by your mother while she cantillates the fable of a king who bears your name, only to learn in the refrain that you are not the king. You are indeed the fable. Then you are nudged out into a capital that will forget you by centuries end. Your eyes soldered to a scrim that flashes doppelgangers of you erected like monuments in all the squares. But the sofa strapped to your backside is busted and all the seams in your pockets unthread themselves until all of you is porous like a thimble, a river rushing through you that you are not built to filter. Imagine being told for so many years that you are a chateau when in fact you are a shanty with old magazines for a roof. Pobrecito. No one has even dealt you a license to admit frailty. Soon you will only know how to cry for your first nanny and light matches as a last attempt at dragging every motley world with you into the extinction you see idling at the end of your driveway. But hush, hush and settle. It'll be all right, I promise. Look, you had a good run of it. Take comfort in knowing that all those you defaced and extirpated will never reciprocate the pain you caused them because they just won't remember you. This last one is inspired by the entire history of protest movements on planet Earth. It's dedicated directly to all of those who are out there risking their health and their safety to do the good work right now. It's called Areto for the Shipwrecked. Like a charm of goldfinches, we will gather. We will gather at the sea crest and inside toppled cubicles, drawing upon this horizon of shady bank tellers and chemical weapons depots, as if cajoled toward the coast by the sheen of a lighthouse. We will gather upon the terraces of a crumbling metropolis and along the dunes of Atacama, Mojave, Kalahari. We will gather as we quake, goaded by the echoes of limbless beggars in Fresno and cancer-stricken housewives in Beijing, and we will know that we are being watched, that this is no network production. We are being watched and we are being followed. And so all at once we will lead the lost in a rumba. And we will not rumble, shirking the title of rabble. We will gather the rubble from the sewer grates and flooded cellars of Palestine and Fukushima of Detroit and La Paz, and we will tether the scintilla of plywood and plastic into a hope-shrouded oasis. We will gather. We will gather not like mold or like flies, but like tidal waves, or like skate punks dark sliding the rim of a jilted pool. And we will gather to consider how the scent of baked bread can travel across epics where no barricades are raised along fairways and boulevards. We will gather, summoned by a monumental hunger. We will share blankets and soup with our enemies. Together we will carve up the night with candles and canticles. The splintering of our shins by SWAT teams will spark the loveless to sing. We will gather. We will gather like pigeons along twisted phone lines. We will be nameless and formless, a bog of glistening skin calling for a terminal armistice. We will gather in Selma, in Port-au-Prince, in Monrovia, in Manila. We will bind ourselves like cloth over a fevered chest, and we will break nothing when we leave. Together, we will float across courtyards like a warm sponge over a sore shin. We will be a shore of sin shameless, carousing, a flesh-tinted mandala, bribing the sky with the promise that we will return each day until fear is in need of hospice. And we will come bearing palo santo and peach pie. And whenever the wounds of injustice are salted in our towns and favelas, we will return again to the squares of Tiananmen and Taksim, of Tahrir and Trafalgar, of Bolivar and Union, like barnacles or fluorescent algae. We will gather, we will gather, 
we will gather. Thank you. Hello, I'm J.C. Todd. I'm so pleased to be here with you and to be reading poems of protest with these amazing poets. Thank you to the Dodge Poetry Program. In the 1970s, I taught at Camp Hill Correctional Institution in Pennsylvania in a locked ward that was designated as the only in-prison drug and alcohol treatment program in the state. This poem is dedicated to the men of B Block. The title is Gates. Seven gates opened and closed. Oiled gears rolled them back. A lever swung like a mallet setting off the first gear. That led to others. The order of the day here. Once things were set into motion, others followed. An efficiency that tidied disaster. The last gate shutting all of us in a blanched corridor, loud as a feedlot. The clangs bawled in my ears. Monday through Friday, I passed out of daylight, down concrete stairs, caged in by chain link, where, below ground, I taught men to read. They were dragged under and held down without mercy. There, in the artificial light of an underworld, the men taught me to read their worth. And the second poem is a brief history of prison and policing <clears throat> running parallel to my family history. The, t the title is Please. Please. As my daughter's hundred thousand cells divided and swelled into organs, limbs, brain, gut, into the face whose features we recognize as human. As her body grew from dot to comma to rolled up ball of flesh and bone, as she pushed away from me in birth, I was born into the world where she would live, its playing fields and killing floors. This was in 1982, when this nation had found a new way to profit from oppression of the citizens whom the Constitution had been framed to keep enslaved and the laws of city, state, and nation continued to be written to oppress them, although the Emancipation Proclamation had set them free. As my daughter crawled, rolled over, then began to shape her breath as word, Mama, Mama, a double exhalation whose sent to me was milk and honey. As she learned her please and thank you, the nation reconfigured justice to increase profit through bricks and mortar industry, building prisons. It was a boon for small towns whose futures had gone bust. A new industry, corrections, and a new war, the war on drugs, to fill the cells with bodies, mostly black, so that out-of-work men, mostly white, could be employed. Nothing new here. A redo of plantation, overseen by state, supported by a feeder system managed by police. 
By the time my little girl had grown into a woman who sometimes called me mama, as in mama dear and mama please, the cell phone had become a camera that recorded public habit of violence against black people. Then the nation learned their names and the cities and towns that had become their killing fields. Ferguson, Michael Brown, Los Angeles, Easel Ford, Cleveland, Tamir Rice, Waller County, Texas, Sandra Ford, New York, Eric Gardner, and Minneapolis, where George Floyd said, I can't breathe, where he said, please, where his last two faint exhalations were, Mama. Hi everybody, my name is Marina Carrera and I'm super honored to be here with you today reading poems and holding space for Dodge's poetry and protest. I am a queer first generation daughter of Portuguese immigrants and um, I'm going to be reading some poems for you today. Uh, let me just adjust my chair so I'm centered for you. Awesome. Uh, the two poems I'm going to start with are called Matins, which are early morning religious services or bird songs. Um, usually sung in the morning, and I'll end with two vespers, which are religious uh, evening services. Matins. The trilling lifts me from sleep like heavy red curtains on opening night, except it is already day and I'm making coffee. The sunlight grasps my window with glorious light, and I want to drop down to my knees. Hallelujah the shit out of this life before the kids and wife wake before the news breaks like a chestnut with tales of new bombs and old systems, before social media reminds me Mercury will soon retrograde and America is still racist as fuck, killing off her black babies. I want to pluck each sparrow from the locust tree in my front yard and swallow them, for there's nothing a lonely body hates more than a little morning song. Matins. It isn't personal, but global. The universe didn't intend on making me rootstock for sadness, the dead tiredest of the dead tired. Monkey brain keeps me waiting in the pity pool from sleep while a dizzy flock of possible futures rattle me from REM with the beating of iridescent wings. I dream even when I am awake shift my foot from one cloud to the other until it's just another cardboard city and I, its paper citizen. Sing me good morrow, Sparrow. Tell me one day the egg of the sun will not crack over me, but hang like a giant pill. One morning, the mothership will not leave Earth without me. Rachel McKibbins is one of my favorite poets, and this is a poem called Variation on a Theme by Rachel McKibbins. I have come to take my body back from the forest, once replete of never-ending pines, their belly-skinned, bleeding, resin, orchestras of crickets, the occasional stray. I have come to take it back from his hands, dirty and calloused by a dying, coughing motorcycle, from his mouth, rank of cheap whiskey and rogue of residual wit. I will bring my body home where I'll bathe it first in moon water and then in wine, a libation for the ghost child looking for sheep but finding wolves. Let this be where my body becomes mine again, the bruised arms and numb vulva and cut feet always somewhere else in sex for years. Let this be where my body is a brusha, a noose of pine around the neck of every man who's burned women at the stake of his own vulnerability. Flower moon in quarantine. 
Astrologers say this moon in Scorpio is where we welcome the death of an old life, an old identity, old ways of being. It's letting ourselves be reborn into a new state of consciousness. I could use a new life, a new conscience. This one feels fractured and spills memories like guts in a ball of vinu dailuj. This one is a broken, sequined diary. This life's been a one-way trek of misery mountain, toes curled at the edge. Hell, I don't even know what I mean anymore. Just that I never imagined the end to look like this. Breakfast at nine, homeschool from 10.30 to 12.30, then lunch, remote work and cleaning in between. By dinner, I'm clogged dry with coffee and emails. Lists of flowers I'll plant and herbs I'll forget to take. I blame my follies on the flower moon and not the woman breaking my heart. I sit in my tub and fill it with tears until I am under everything warm and wavy, far from the new normal. Before bed, I'm a hare baring her teeth at the goddess who swallowed my dreams and left an egg in their place. She'll mistake this for a smile like everyone else. And I'll end with my two Vesper poems. Vespers. I tell my girls to believe in grandfathers reincarnated as spiders. The only dangerous men are the ones alive and this makes me a mean woman of sound mind. I trust my gut on everything. That when wretched intestines churn, something's off. And boy, everything's off. But I call it out. I tell you when my cups overflowed. One day, I'll tell you it's cracked for good. I am always a giant at mistakes, but lately, I am queen of confession. Lately, I am so small. My hand is a ball again in the midst of a voice calloused. Um, Vespers. They orbit around me, the three loves of my life, dervishes of quarantine, mad ringmaster, and fiery acrobats, gentle order, gentle giant of order, and minions of joy. I should be happy, full. I should be floored and overwhelmed with unabashed gratitude. I try to remember that the day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit, but what grows under blue light? What sings in mud? What dances in sand but poisonous creatures? Memories of a time when I had none of the three sit with me while I drive, and for a moment the thrill of absolute freedom knocks me back. I almost come when I think about it. What some will call greed, I call compassion. I want all of the love in the world from everyone and no one. I deserve everything and nothing at the same time. Thank you and be well. Hi, my name is uh, Taim Bajess. I'm a poet. And I'm here to read some poems on Juneteenth, 2020, in the spirit of Juneteenth. So these are poems about protest and liberation and self-liberation. I want to start off with a poem that's 85 years old, but because of our current political circumstances and because of the sloganeering of our current resident of the White House, this poem is could have been written yesterday. So this is a poem by my man, Langston Hughes, entitled, Let America Be America Again. Let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plane, seeking a home where he himself is free. America never was America to me. Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be that great strong land of love, 
were never kings connived nor tyrants scheme that any man be crushed by one above. It never was America to me. Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath. But opportunity is real and life is free. Equality is in the air we breathe. There's never been equality for me, nor freedom in the homeland of the free. Say, who are you that mumbles in the dark? And who are you that draws your veil across the star? I am the poor white, fooled and pushed apart. I am the Negro bearing slavery's scar. I am the red man, driven from the land. I am the immigrant, clutching the hope I seek and finding only the same old stupid plan of dog-eat-dog, dog, of mighty crush the weak. I am the young man, full of strength and hope, tangled in that ancient endless chain of profit, power, gain, of grab the land, of grab the gold, of Grab the ways of satisfying need, of work the men, of take the pay, of owning everything for one's own greed. I am the farmer, bondsman to the soil. I am the worker, sold to the machine. I am the Negro, servant to you all. I am the people, humble, hungry, mean. Hungry yet today, despite the dream, beaten yet today, oh pioneers. I am the man who never got ahead, the poorest worker bartered through the years, yet I'm the one who dreamt our basic dream in the old world, while still a serf of kings, who dreamt a dream so strong, so brave, so true that even yet its mighty daring sings in every brick and stone, in every furrow turned that's made America the land it has become, in search of what I meant to be my own. For I'm the one who left dark Ireland's shore, and Poland's plain, and England's grassy lea, and torn from black Africa's strand I came to build a homeland of the free. The free? Who said the free? Not me, surely not me. The millions on relief today, the millions shot down when we strike, the millions who have nothing for our pay. For all the dreams we've dreamed and all the songs we've sung and all the hopes we've held and all the flags we've hung, the millions who have nothing for our pay, except the dream that's almost dead today. Let America be America again. The land that never has been yet, and yet must be. The land where every man is free. The land is mine, the poor man's, Indians, Negroes, me, who made America, whose sweat and blood, whose faith and pain, whose hand at the foundry, whose plow in the rain must bring back our mighty dream. Again. Sure. Call me any ugly name you choose. The steel of freedom does not stain. From those who live like leeches on the people's lives, we must take back our land again. America. Oh, yes. I say it plain. America never was America to me, and yet I swear this oath. America will be, out of the rack and ruin of our gangster death, the rape and rot of graft and stealth and lies, we, the people, must redeem the land, the mines, the plants, the rivers, the mountains, and the endless plain, all, all the stretch of these great green states, and make America. Nineteen thirty-five. He wrote that. Still relevant in the 
year 2020. Because he had that 2020 vision. Now here's a poem by temporary poet Evie Shockley from her book, The New Black. And this is entitled, Ode to My Blackness. You are my shelter from the storm and the storm. My anchor in the troubled sea. Night casts you warm and glittering upon my shoulders. Some would say you give off no heat. Some folks can't see beyond the closest star. You are the tunnel John Henry guide to car. I see the light at the end of you, the beginning. I dig down deep. And there you are, at the root of my blues. You're all thick and dark, enveloping the root of my blues. Seems like it's so hard to let you go when I got nothing to lose. Without you, I would be just a self of my former shadow. Shockley from the new black. And this is a poem by uh, Jericho Brown, who just won the Pulitzer Prize this year. You should get this one from his book, The Tradition. I like this poem because uh, it's about navigating the terrain. racist America, realizing the geography that one inhabits down to the buildings and the stones. And a long way. Your grandfather was a murderer. I'm glad he's dead. He invented the toothbrush, but I don't care to read his name on the building I walked to avoid the rain. He raped women who weren't yet women. I imagine the wealth he left when you turn red. I imagine you as a baby bouncing on a rapist's knee. I like my teeth clean. I like to stay warm and healthy. I get it. Then I get it. Again, my oral hygiene and your memory avoiding each other. Like a girl who walks the long way to miss the neighborhood bully. Like the bully who'd really rather beat up on somebody new. I can't help you. I can't hug you. I can't grip your right hand, though it's never held a gun though it never covered a lovely mouth. And you can't pay me to cross the ground floor without wishing I could spit on or mar some slick surface and not think of who will have to do the cleaning. We'd all still be poor. I'd end up drenched going around. You'd end remembering what won't lead to a smile that gleams in dark places. Some don't know how dark some do. Jericho Brown from the tradition. This next poem is uh, a <clears throat> poem by a favorite poet of mine, Ty Freedom Ford from her book, How to Get Over, which has quite a few poems entitled How to Get Over in it. But this is the title poem. How to Get Over. Be born black as ants on a chicken bone. Black 
as Nina's Simone and Mahalia's moan, black as rock pile smile and resilience, black as resistance and ry rhythm and sunny blues, black as no shoes and dirt floors, black as whore and hot and tot, fox trot, lindy hop, and watusi pussy and pyramids, black as darkness under your eyelids, black between your legs, black as dregs of rum, sugar cane, summer plums, holy ghost hum, black as bruised throat, field holler, wading in the shallow, black as ocean river, stream creek running, black, transparent, translucent, transatlantic, slanted, shanties, planted in red clay, black as funky chickens, and chitlins and kinfolk sold away, black as auction block and shop and hip hop and rock and roll and chop shop and cop cars and parole and overseer patrols and one drop rules and pools of blood, black as beige and good hair and sound and white and light skinned and my grandmama is Cherokee, Iroquois, Choctaw, black as pit bulls and lockjaw and rage and hoodies black my eyes and black eyed peas peasy heads and loose tracks black as trees and noose and hounds let loose in the night black as fist and fight sojourner and not turner and righteousness black as fuck and not giving a fuck mud stuck and quicksand quick Hand, hustle, thigh, muscle, and hurl, black as cotton and tobacco and indigo, black as wind and bad weather and feather and tar and snap beans and mason jars, black as liquor please and hallelujah, black asses and black strap molasses and turn your black back on audiences, black as banjo and djembe and porch and stoop and spooks sitting by the door, black as roaches in front of company, and lawn jockeys, and latchkey kids, and high bids, and spades, and shit talk, black as cakewalk, and second line, and black magic, and tap dance, lap dance, and all of that ass, black as jazz, and juke, and juju, and spirit disguised as harmonica spit, black as cast iron skillets and grits and watermelon seeds flitting from lips, black as tambourines hitting cornbread hips, black batons splitting lips and Martin Luther King Jr. boulevards and downtown beatdowns, black sit-ins and come-ups and cops upside your heads and we shall overcomes and get down on it, black, get into it, black, Let's get it on and get it while the getting is good. Black as white hoods and backwood revivals. Black as survival and Trayvon and Tyrone and Josephus and Amen and Moses and Jesus and getting over it. Black. Ty Freedom Ford. How to get over it. And uh, I guess I'm going to read a few of my own, a couple of my own. This poem is uh, entitled, um, well, it was written in uh, 2012, but it's still relevant today. When you think about uh, the ways that our civil liberties are slowly, slowly shrinking in this country. The first thing I want to know if you're arrested is habeas corpus. In other words, what is the body of evidence against you? So, this is entitled habeas corpus. America. You have the body, ankle, and hip, each parted lip and each hair, the body with its sweat-stained heat and its cough, 
The spleen and tongue of the body is yours from navel to spine. You have the body bundled like a fist, shuddered in darkness, bound, bloodied, under suspicion. You have the body blistered with accusation, hooded, blinded, manacled, maced. You have the body electrified, born unto the body of the Republic we stand in stress position. You have the body numbered, targeted, locked, firing sequence initiated, search warrant expired when you have the body expired, exploded, the body preening in the wedding party, in a car speeding through night, in the morning before prayer, trial held in the head of the soldier flying bodiless remote drone from his body. I am the body in this voice, in my silence, the body rots, the body unwilling to answer when you have the body and the blood on the body you have. The body stretched and waterlogged, named and unnamed, foreign and domestic, accusation in the eye of the body plucked out. You have the body shipped into concrete and photographed, stripped. You have the skull and the penis in the heart of the body, each vulva and opening the digital, digital record of the body as it writhes. You have the body definitively, indefinitely, the body huddled in the shape of our body. The body you have is the body you have. You have the body. Habeas. So this next poem uh, was written in response to a uh, kind of community project uh, along the, in, in collaboration with Black Lives Matter. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, uh, Hockney Brown and uh, I believe Jericho had were organizing this group well black poets to come together and put a statement online which had certain phrases in it one of them being one's name i am a black poet i have a right to be angry etc and i wanted to respond to the call and i realized it became it was kind of a form in itself so um, I just kind of started playing with the form. And the other thing I think about this, uh, this poem that I'd like to share with you is that um, it has the names of many victims of uh, black victims of police brutality in it. Um, now over the, I guess, close to 40 years, I've been writing poems since I was a kid. That occasion to write many, many different poems about police killing black people, and uh, you know the the thing about that is it gets to be um, it, it gets it, it weighs on you because you could take a poem from the year 19, 1998 or whatever, and then just replace the names and it'd be the pretty much the same the same thing same poem um that's on the personal side of writing this poem it's 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 hard coming back to the same issue over and over again in a, in a different way um and that speaks to um you know the the persistence of of uh, racism white supremacy in this country and also Yes, uh, speaks to fatigue in a certain way of my imagination. Uh, but the other thing is in, in this poem is that there's names that are not American, and there are there's uh, there's the names of children that were killed from United States drones. So when we're talking about the 
violence of the police state here in the United States. We're also talking about the violence of the police state abroad and across the globe. We're talking about defund the police. I believe it's, it makes sense to think about defunding the military and taking that wealth and reinvesting it in this country, in the infrastructure and the people and education and health care. Speeches, right? So much for speeches. Here's the poem. Against Silence. My name is Taim Bajas. I am a black poet. I have a silence to be rightened. I have a silence after each shooting. I remain a nation unsilenced. I am a poet murdering silence. My name is Eric. My name is Bell. My name is Eleanor. My name is Nation. My rights fit any murder description. My remains remained on the asphalt for four hours while the crowd screamed about my rights. Then the silence as I was shoved into an SUV and carted to the morgue. My name is Poetic, Trayvon, Diallo. Guzman, sing my blackness in the headlines. My name once held all possibilities, but now flies out from the mouth hauling anger and sorrow. I have a right to be angry. I have a morgue inside my silence. I have an arm against my throat and a bullet in my head. I have a wedding to go to, a graduation to walk, a little brother to chill with, and now I'm a face on a placard in a sea of anger, a newspaper article. I'm a question passed from one generation to the next, a lesson in fear, and all I really want is to go home. My name is murdered. My name is a silent snapshot on the funeral program. The officer remained silent. He was programmed by a nation's anger a moaning silence born in the chokehold of a slave ship. Ask if he is a drone cruising the streets of the nation programmed to murder black. Ask a drone for the poetry of the names of the rightless it has murdered. Ask the silence about your rights. My name is Pearly Golden. My name is Tariq Aziz. My name is Kayla Moore. My name is Ayanna Stanley Jones. My name is Fazal Wahad. My name is a nation of funerals. The silence after my name is murdered by the sound of the next. My name is Michael Brown. My name is Kamani Gray, Kendrick McDade, Ashuk John, Muhammad Yas Khan. The angry drone spotted me while I was coming home from the store. On the way to work. On the way to a wedding. Walking down the street. The drone looked down at me from its great height and power. And the sky was full of its murder. My murder is a right this nation angers for. My name is a poem. My name is not silence. I am a black poem written into the silence left behind. And I thank you for listening, sharing with me words of the black experience on this Juneteenth, 2020. May peace be with you. May power be with us all.